Hello everyone! Hey Tony! Have you ever wondered how exactly snake venom affects the human body? Well, I happen to have a couple of vipers and cobras lying around. We'll let them bite you and see exactly how the venom kills people. Let's begin! Let's start by saying that venomous snakes are not bloodthirsty killers at all. They never attack humans or large animals for no reason. It happens purely out of self-defense. For example, if someone steps on them or gets too close to their hideout. Most often they bite the feet or the muzzle of those who are particularly curious. Let's start the experiment with the vipers. Release the kraken. I've always wanted to say that. Well, it's done. The place of the bite swells and turns red quickly, and Tony starts feeling an unbearable pain. In general, there are two kinds of snake venom. The first spreads through the blood system, gradually destroying the vital organs and tissues of the body. The second acts on the nervous system, making the lungs stop working and causing death from suffocation in just a few hours. Viper venom belongs to the first type and acts mainly on the blood circulatory system, causing hemorrhages. It severely affects the muscles and some other tissues of the body. Snake venom changes the composition of the blood and kills white blood cells. White blood cells protect the body from pathogenic germs, but they cannot cope with the action of the venom. So when germs start to multiply on the wound, which won't heal and may even get infected with gangrene. Likewise, viper venom affects the entire body as it spreads through the bloodstream. In addition to changing the composition of the blood, it causes severe damage to the tissues of the liver, spleen, and kidneys. The kidneys usually remove the poisonous substances from the blood directly into the urine and then naturally into the toilet. They also try to remove the snake venom, but in this case their tissues partially die off. If viper venom enters the digestive system, there is severe inflammation and hemorrhages, but the venom itself is destroyed by the digestive juices and bile. Now Tony is feeling drowsy and is semi-conscious. He may suffer from nausea, vomiting, and even convulsions. His heart rate increases, but the heart itself becomes weaker, the body becomes cold, and Tony has trouble breathing. Death comes from respiratory failure within 12 hours to 8 days if no antidote is administered. However, not always a viper bite leads to death. Sometimes the body can cope with the poison itself and the person recovers. That's exactly what happened to Tony. The heart starts functioning better, the body warms up, and the swelling goes down. But the damage caused by the poison of the viper was so strong that Tony may feel weak for a few months and it is even possible that the disease will return and become chronic. That is, weakness and poor heart and lung function may remain forever. But Tony is a strong boy and is rapidly recovering. I think Tony is ready for us to try the second kind of snake venom. By the way, it is abundant in the most famous snake, the cobra. Let's see what we have here. There is no swelling at the bite site, no pain either, but Tony feels tired and faints. Breathing and heartbeat become labored. Such poison can cause death in just a few hours if nothing is done. The fact is that cobra venom affects exclusively on the nervous system, so it does not produce any local effects. The main active agent of cobra venom is a neurotoxin that affects the respiratory center, causing suffocation. However, even such a bite may not be fatal. The body is able to cope on its own if a small amount of venom enters the body but it is better to get help from specialists and receive competent treatment. You can recover much faster from a cobra bite than from a viper bite, because if the body has withstood the effects of the poison, it is easily removed by the kidneys without damage to the tissues and blood, whether we're talking about a person or an animal. The main thing is to drink plenty of fluids and go to the toilet. By the way, if you are interested, we already did a very interesting episode on what to do if you are bitten by a poisonous snake. As the saying goes, forewarned is forearmed. You can see the link here or in the description below. Now tell us in the comments what else you know about poisonous snakes and if you have ever met one. The best stories will be featured in the next episode. Like and subscribe if you enjoy our experiments with Tony. Bye bye!